Good morning, YouTube. It's been a while since I've made a video related to my nursing journey, and I wanted to update you guys on my whole process of how I got my first nurse practitioner job. Um, so as some of you guys may know already, I graduated in December. I took my boards, and I am a licensed family nurse practitioner. So since then, pretty much all 2019, um, and a little bit of the end of last year, I actually started looking for a job before I graduated. Uh, which was pointless in my opinion, but that's what they tell you to do. So that's what I did. Um, but all 2019, I have been on the hunt looking for a looking for my first nurse practitioner job. I am not picky on the area anywhere that will allow me to work as a family nurse practitioner. I pretty much go being an ER nurse. You're just open. I feel like being an ER nurse makes you open to all specialties because you see everything. So there's in my opinion not one area that you know I'm just like really focused on because I am used to seeing everything from minor illnesses to you know trauma patients so I'm just like whoever hires me that's where I'm going so what I used to look for a job actually was indeed indeed was major 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 like I was on indeed every day and um, what else did I use? I used Glassdoor. They have an app. And I used the app for Glassdoor. And I feel like most of these job sites, to be honest with you, they show the same jobs. I don't know how they do, but I don't really feel like... I feel like they're sharing information because it, it looks the same. So I feel like if you're on at least maybe two job boards, then you'll be fine. So, um... I uploaded my my resume and you know I had a I have a CV ready in case they request a CV. So um, yeah, a CV is a curriculum vitae just for you guys that don't know. And if you're not familiar with what a CV is um, and the difference between a CV and a resume, just Google it because I did not like before last year I didn't know what the hell a CV was, but I know that I had to make one for school and employers are asking for it so yeah i created a cv um so make sure you do that so yeah um i think initially i had a couple of phone interviews that really didn't go anywhere and uh, and and i'm in florida so the, jo the the job market is horrible in florida there's just so many nurse practitioners here so many physician assistants that employers can be very 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 picky very picky um i was excited to get these phone interviews from florida companies but they never really went anywhere so i started looking um outside of my my home state and i applied for jobs you guys in california texas las vegas oregon washington north carolina south carolina georgia and maryland now my top choices for job locations it's florida because i'm in florida in maryland because my husband is from maryland and i'm familiar with maryland so um i went on indeed and applied for a maryland job and i got a call back this job i found out is actually a florida company and i did my initial phone interview and they seemed to really like me and they told me that they had a position open in Florida, as well as the position that I applied for in Maryland. So <laughs> I did that phone interview and they wanted me to come to them the next day, which is a two hour drive. So the very next day I drove to them and did an in-person interview with three people which was the the boss, the owner, um, his regional manager, and his father, who um, it doesn't seem like that would be appropriate, but his father has a background in healthcare administration, and he has some some insight on you know the type of people that his son may or may not want to hire. So it makes it makes sense. So yeah, I did a, an in person interview the next day with three people and it took about an hour and I can be just be honest with you guys like the best thing you can do and I wasn't nervous it, I, I really didn't 
dawn on me until I left. Like, oh my God, I just did an interview with three people. Um, now, if somebody would have told me that when I was in school, I would have been like, oh my God, I'm not going to be able to do that. Like, I, I don't know anything. You know, I, and you do feel like, after all this schooling, you just don't know anything because it's starting all over again and and you're not sure what they're going to ask you. So, um, yeah. So anyway, the day before when I did the phone interview, she emailed me this four part personality test. Yeah. And it was an aptitude test. One part, the other three were basically personality questions. It was, it took about, an hour to do those four tests so I did the phone interview the personality test when I got there which is two hours away from me I did an in-person interview with three people and then before I left I sat in their lobby and did a 15 I can't remember if it's 12 to 15 pages uh, another set another test which was personality um, questions basically and they told me they would let me know so um I kind of figured that they they wanted to hire me, which was exciting because, you know, you I prayed for a, I wanted to get a, a new job in the first three months after graduating, and and um I figured they wanted to hire me, but you never know until they actually, you know, extend an offer. So then after that, they wanted me to come back, which is two hours away, and shadow their, um, their doctor, their medical director so I went there for two hours and shadowed him he seemed to like me um it was kind of awkward so I don't know how much he liked me but but I did get the job the only downside about it is I didn't get the Florida job so I did get a job in Maryland and my family and I will be (sighs) I don't want to say relocating because we're going to keep our home in Florida but we're going to be moving to Maryland, which is right where my husband's family is. And I'm pretty happy about that because he gets to be around his his family. And my kids get to really get to know their father's side of the family. So that's going to be interesting. But yeah, uh, that's it was a, I wouldn't say grueling interview process, but it was quite a long interview process. Now, once I got this job... And once they extended the offer and I did sign a two-year contract, I started getting offers, which was really distressing because I'm like, I already signed this contract and, you know, I don't necessarily, I mean, it's more ideal for me to be in Florida, but I've signed this contract. So I interviewed with a doctor that is like 20 minutes away from my house. And I'm going to just, this is just a warning for new new nurse practitioners which I am new too but I, I feel like I am just was just a little bit smart enough to not accept this job but I did just go on the interview because I did a Facebook poll with my you know my Facebook friends and I said should I just forget it or go just go to the interview and hear them out and everybody said just go to the interview and hear them out and this is a job I found on ND as well as the Maryland job so I go to this interview and let me tell you something. I I was an LPN, I was you know an RN, and I've gotten to know some physicians in my area. And this guy is such a dick, but it's, it was such a convenient job. And I'm like, oh my gosh, let me just let me just go hear him out. Everybody's saying go hear him out. Let me go hear him out. This guy would not guarantee me like my hours. Like you are gonna work. Monday through Friday, from this to this, he would not guarantee me, uh, my schedule would be so unknown, it's, uh, uh, you know, ridiculous. He wants to pay basically 10 to $15 per patient, and I, I just could not, you know, I'm like, that's unacceptable. Either you offer a, a solid salary, and I see as many patients as I can possibly see, or, you know, or whatever, but I'm not, you can't pay me based on, you know, how many patients I see. What if patients cancel their appointment? What if they just don't show up in the office, you know, and a part of that job will require me to go to long-term care facilities and see patients. Well, I'm not going to see new patients in a long-term care facility. I'm going to see the same patients. So, like, how are you going to, 
Uh, I mean, I don't even need to see those patients, but like what, once, you know, once a week or once a month or something, you know, it's just ridiculous how, you know, I can't imagine what the paycheck would look like. And so I reached out to a, you know, former coworker who knew of the, that particular doctor's former nurse practitioner. Oh my gosh, the information that I got was so horrible. I, I it, it was just a bad, bad situation, a very bad situation. So, of course, I didn't accept that job. I just went to, you know, hear him, ha hear him out like everybody said on Facebook to do. And, yeah, it was it was a waste of time. But I just went anyway. Um, I still have my Maryland job. I intend to um, move to Maryland next month in May. That is my goal, as long as the Maryland Board of Nursing doesn't take forever to give me my nurse practitioner license, which I am thinking is going to take a long time. If that happens, I will do my training for this new position, and then I'll basically go on unpaid leave until Maryland sends me my nurse practitioner license, which is nuts that it takes 8 to 10 weeks. In Florida, oh my goodness, it took three weeks. Three weeks, which I, it felt like forever, but, you know, they have to do whatever background checks or whatever uh, credentialing that they have to do. It makes no sense to me, no sense that Maryland takes eight to ten weeks um, if you want to, you know, get a license by endorsement. Especially if you already have a license. Like, Florida has already done all of the checks that they need to do, just give me a license that's how i feel anyway but um yeah that's how i got my job i got my first nurse practitioner job on indeed and i really believe in indeed and glassdoor i love 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 those two apps um indeed has a message their own messaging system so i literally was almost like text messaging on indeed with these with these employers oh my god I forgot to tell y'all about this other interview I did. So, yeah, you know, I'm in Central Florida, so I drove like an hour and a half to an interview with a physician who was offered a practice. The original owner of that practice was like had a stroke and was leaving, the, you know, basically had left the practice. And <laughs> and he asked this physician to take over his office. And that physician wasn't even sure if he was really going to do it. So I drove there. I did the interview. The guy had not looked at my CV. He had not looked at my, my resume at all. So it's like the first 30 seconds, I looked at him like, did you read? Did you even read my resume? Because he was asking me questions as if I've been a nurse practitioner forever. I was like, I'm a brand new nurse practitioner. Like, I don't, I'm still working as an RN. You did not even read my resume, dude. So <laughs> anyway... He, you know, was like, um, well, if you want to go see the office, it's about 15, 20 minutes further north. Just go, you know, go by and see the office. Do God. And I asked, like, okay, what kind of charting system does, it, does this office use? He was like, they don't use a charting system, which I thought was completely illegal at this point. Like, there's so many, you know, and I remember reading in the nursing, nurse practitioner program, like, they, everybody has to be using electronic medical records by a certain time, and that time is past. So I don't know how this office is functioning with paper charts. I'm going to insert a picture, hopefully right here, so you guys can see what I saw when I looked through the door. I put my phone up to the glass and put my, my camera like flush with the glass to take a picture because I was so in shock. It looked like a barber's chair or I don't even know was in the lobby. It was such a small lobby. It, the location was horrible. And as a former business owner of a home health agency, I'm like, location is everything. The location is horrible. You know, I was like, there's no way. And this doctor also wanted to pay me based on the number of patients that, that you see, which is ridiculous in an office. If I were in an ER, in the hospital, and there's a constant influx of new patients, that's different. But it, in, a, in a medical office, there's no way for you to actually know how many patients you're going to see that day. It, it's insanity. 
So I did not, of course, you know, wasn't going to take that job. I don't even think that God accepted that business offer from the former physician that had a stroke. But what a mess. I'm going to tell you something. These doctors, and I don't know if it's a Florida thing, but they really don't want to pay. They don't want to pay nurse practitioners. They really don't. The job I do have that I signed the contract for, I told them I want to make between this number and this number. That's the pay range that I want. So for the first year, they gave me that first number. And for the second year of my contract, they gave me the second number that I quoted, which made me ecstatic. I was like, they're literally paying me what I asked for. And I did not go crazy with what I asked for because I am a new nurse practitioner. And I feel like I probably could have gotten more, but, you know, I didn't know. I don't know. I don't know. I just asked for a number that, you know, I could manage two homes and still have a savings, um, which was a pretty number. But uh, I feel like in the years to come, if I stick with this specialty, which is basically orthopedics, um, then I will definitely be asking for more, in, you know, after this two-year contract is up, whether it's with this company or not, um, because I do plan to take my orthopedic nurse practitioner certification once I have experience with this employer. So, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's my job search story in a nutshell. It has been crazy as far as you know, some of the things that I've heard from, you know, potential employers and you cannot not like you cannot just jump at the first job that's offered to you. You will find yourself in a really shitty situation if you do that. Like you have to be able to negotiate, seriously negotiate these contracts and be able to look at a contract and say, this is some bullshit or you know what? I can do this. I can do this for a year. I can do this for two years. It's, I think I'll be comfortable. You have to know that you're going to work your butt off and, and earn the money that they're giving you. But at the same time, don't kill yourself for these employees because the one employer that's like 20 minutes away from my house, he told me straight up, I'm trying to make my life easier. Which means I would be the person on call seven days a week. I would have one day off a week, which was during the week, which the first thing I thought was, I have to work every weekend? No, not going to happen. Not going to happen. So when, you know, when the office is closed and, you know, on the weekends, he's on call for, for the local big clinics and he would be work as a hospitalist. I'm not going to be doing that. Mm-mm. It, that's just insanity. That is insanity. So, anyway, so yeah, I got my first nurse practitioner job. If you have any questions um, about anything else pertaining to finding your nurse practitioner job, or, you know, if you need help with the CV, have any questions about the CV, the resume, anything anything you guys just comment below don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel i'm trying to build my followers up and i know that i have not been making videos consistently but i'm trying now that i'm no longer working a full-time job in preparation for this new nurse practitioner job i am my goal is to do more videos at least twice a week i mean because i do have a lot of things to do um, I still have my PRN job. I still have my kids. So, you know, I'm still a mom. And, you know, but I am going to make a conscious effort to try to get back with you guys. And any questions that you have about CNA, LP, and RN nurse practitioner, let me know. And I'll try to help you guys out. If you look at my other videos, you'll see that I reply to everybody's questions. I don't ignore any, any comments. So definitely um, communicate with me. I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching my video.